Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. In this new tutorial for beginners and average users of Blender, I will show you how to set normal maps and bump maps and how to use them relevantly in cycles. So let's get started. In my Blender scene, I have my character that has been uh, UV unwrapped and I have uh, through multiple maps this uh, bump map that was unpainted and this normal map that was baked using cycles. So I have added um, a shader to my character here. Let's see it. Okay, very simple, just a simple diffuse shader. You can change the viewport color of your shader here that can be useful for organization and also it's peculiar and harmless. So we will add a texture input, texture coordinate. We are using UVs. We will add two image. One will be normal and one the bump map and both will be in the UV space of our character. So if I dive into render viewports, I will see just my simple diffuse shader for the time being. You can see the normal map here and the bump map here. So what was um, often used uh, in tutorials when dealing with a bump map was to add um, a mat node, plug the bump map into this one, use the multiply modifier to be able to divide the strength of the bump map and plug it into the displacement output. Okay, so now you can see the bumping. I will use a glossy shader, it will be more convenient to see what's happening and we see that it, it's way too strong so I can divide it by 10% it's more decent, still a bit too strong 0.01 let's say that's enough I will ok, 0.05 but here I am not using my bump map, uh, my normal map, sorry, which uh, gives my main shape uh, information. So in the process, normal map is baked from a multi-resolution sculp sculpture, while those fine details that will be uh, very hard to uh, to sculpt in multi-resolution mode in Blender, while maybe uh, makeable in ZBrush, I use unpainted texture as I've shown you in my uh, texture painting tutorial. So let's add a normal map node which allow us to convert those color informations into a normal. So I plug it here select UV map information and this has to be plugged in all the shaders so let's try here and see what's happening and you see that it gets uh, really buggy okay for the time being it's because you have to set the color information of the normal to non-color data first. Now it looks better. But if we have a better look to our character, my bump map here doesn't work anymore. As soon as you are using a normal map into a shader, this input won't work anymore. So how do I combine those both maps? It's very easy. I will unplug it here 
and we will add in vector a bump node. So the color of my uh, bump map should be plugged in the 8 value. I've made some tests tweaking this value and I haven't seen any difference. Um, you will mainly use this value to set the power of your bump map. So let's see what's happening here. You see that it's very very strong but if I reduce it to 0 0.2 for example it looks more decent. So now if I want to blend it with the normal map, I can make uh, two methods. The first one will be to use vector mats. Okay. And it will allow us like a, a mix shader or a color mix shader to mix the different normal values. So let's try it and see what's happening. So here I can see this value pumping out and this one also and mixed but here they are added so the strengths of those will get over one and even if it can look uh, pretty nice on a shader it will turn buggy you see that it's undefined here because it goes over what a normal map value is supposed to be so what we can use is the average value. It will make an average value of those both. So we will have like 0 0.9 value of the normal and 0 0.1 value of the bump because it's 1 plus 2 and you make the average value. It looks pretty decent and if I do it like this add a mix shader for example and set it to 0 0.8 I have a decent rendering. The problem is here it will be pretty hard to get a good control over those maps using the average value because you have to make calculation and if you think that your normal map is not powerful enough and you increase this value this value will be lowered so it's really a problem when you want to have a strong normal map plus a strong bump map without using the adding that making the the shaders going crazy so what you have to do is plug the normal map into the bump map so that the normal map will be firstly used as the main geometry interpretation of the surface and then you will add those bump details so if I put it to zero I have my pure normal map here that is not averaged by the former node and I can increase my bumping value as I want. 0 0.2 is kind of pretty strong but uh, for the sake of this tutorial that's great. So now if I plug it here and here, let's see what's happening. I really have a plain control on my bumpiness and normal values here and that's what we are looking for and the f really cool thing about this is that we may call this our normal generator is that when you use a layer weight to get a fresnel, um, fresnel effect on your glossy mixing values here, you can plug the normal into the layer weight and you will see it inheriting the same normals as those and you will have more accurate uh, control over your Fresnel effect. What I usually do is that 
I will have one glossy shader using only the normal map and one using both and I will show you why. The fact that we have a lot of little geometry here make the Fresnel effect not that precise and not that controllable. While if you you only use the normal here, it will be more subtle and you will be mixing your um, shading uh, your glossy uh, factor more easily. Okay, so I have to invert those. Here we are. So it doesn't look perfect here because uh, here I have plugged my glossy with the normal, but as it, I it is mixed using normals, I can unplug it to have it smoother. And if I want to get back my details here, I can use this one also. And you see that I have those nice little details of reflections. So using and setting the normal map this way and the bump map this way allow you for a more realistic uh, character, for example, to use the normal map uh, baked uh, using a multi-resolution where you have uh, sculpted the main wrinkles and stuff like this in Blender, have a perfect separated control over it, and then using a bump map you can paint the skin pores, the smallest wrinkles and stuff like this, and also have a different control over it. You can also drive those or set uh, more complex um, shading values to get to this result. So you may have seen this character on, on Blender Artist for example. You can see my original bump map and here I'm mixing a bunch of maps with um, different Voronoi textures, other textures, my emission textures to create a more complex bump map, inverting it to get those creases and combining it to this emission shader, okay, that is also driven, allowing me through its uh, rigging to have control over the emission value of this character. And then it's a matter of choice if I plug all the bump maps into my layer weights, as you can see it here, sorry, using them or not in the glossy shaders, etc. So it might look a bit complex here, but it's a really simple node setup because mostly you have here the bumping, then the layer weights here for the glossy BSDF. So those are just specific colors for the glossy. As I like to have a color uh, difference depending on the position of my shader to have this nice fresnel and color effect. When you are facing your character, you have such uh, a color of reflection and then it gets bluer or something like this. It's uh, a technique I have used on my a spider creature uh, last year and was really fine. Okay, so really simple using bump and normal and forgetting about this displacement input. It will be um, very useful and Ken Trammell covered this in a few uh, tutorials on its snow shader I think where this input will be used uh, to create a real displacement on the geometry of the mesh. For the time being, I think it's um, just in experimental. It will subdivide the mesh thousands of times to have those nice details, so it will be super resource uh, consuming for your computer. So I believe they will find a solution to make it affordable or maybe in two or three years we'll all have supercomputers that allow us to, to deal with 
this kind of shader. But for the time being, what I use usually is a, a displacement modifier with a displacement map to have um, the main, as you can see, the main um, deformations here, and then the sharpened structure, sharpened geometry is outputted by the normals and the small details by the bump map. So here it makes the render affordable because it gets to like 2 gigabytes of memory usage, which is decent. If you have a, a 4 or 8 gigabyte of RAM, it won't be a problem. And if you have a, a pretty recent uh, graphic card, also you will be able to render it in GPU mode. I hope it was useful for you and it was as simple as possible to understand. And I wish you a good day. See you.